In this lesson, we'll go over the definition of slope. So slope is defined as the rise over the run of a given line and is governed by this formula where x1, y1 and x2 and y2 are two distinct points. Down here, I have the line y is equal to 2x plus 1 and I've labeled a few points on it. This line has slope. What is it? This idea of slope being the rise over run, so I'll write m for slope and put rise over run. What this means is if you pick a point the rise is, in this case, how far you go up, and the run is how far that you go over. So the rise from here to here is 2, and the run from here to here is 1. So for this line, the slope is 2 over 1, or actually you could just write 2. You can use any two points to figure out what the slope of the line is. So like you could have used uh, these two points. So the rise in this case would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the run is 1, 2, 3. So if I use those two points, the slope is 6 over 3, and that still reduces to 2. You can actually even do this backwards. You could say, all right, well, the run, if we go backwards, is 1, 2, 3. So we'll use negative 3 because we're going backwards. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6 because we're going down. If you were to go backwards, your slope would be negative 6 over negative 3, but the negatives cancel, and either way you do it, you still get 2. So every line has slope, and you can use any two points on the line to figure out what it is. Slope itself is telling you, well, is your line increasing or is your line decreasing? And then, well, how much is it increasing or decreasing? Here we got that slope was positive 2. The fact that it's positive means that your line is going up, had we gotten a negative slope, our line would have been going down. The bigger the number is, the steeper the line. So like if the slope happened to be 3, you'd have a steeper line than if your slope is 2. One last thing I'd like to do is actually use this formula to figure out the slope, even though we already know what it is, just to get some practice with it. To do this, you need to pick two points and then plug that information into this formula to see what we get. I think I'll use this point and this point. So let's see, this point here is negative 2, negative 3. And then this point here is, that is 2, 5. Once you pick your two points, I'll say like, oh, okay, well, this is the first one, so this is my x1 and y1. And therefore, my other point is my other x2, y2. If you want to use these two points to compute the slope, this formula says you take the difference of the y values, but it has to be y2 minus y1. So that's 5 minus a minus 3. So that's 5, we're subtracting, but we're subtracting a negative. And then the bottom, x2 minus x1, that's this minus this. So that's 2 minus a negative 2. I have to reduce this. But 5 minus a minus 3 is really 5 plus 3. That's 8. In the denominator, 2 minus a minus 2 is 2 plus 2, which is 4. And, of course, this reduces, to no surprise, the same value, 2 over 1, or simply just 2. The reason this formula works is because y2 minus y1 tells you the rise, and x2 minus x1 tells you the run. If we go between this point and this point, the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's exactly the number we got in the numerator. That's y2 minus y1. The run is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's this number we got in the denominator. And that's x2 minus x1. So even though there's this nice explicit formula, this one does work in a lot of cases. This formula is nice if you don't have like a graph to work with and you can't easily determine what the points are. So this one is always fine to use. Um, sometimes it will be necessary if you don't have a graph. In example one, we're given the graph of a line. Let's determine what the slope is and also what's the y-intercept. So we have this very informal definition of slope, which was rise over the run, which might work fine here. And of course, you can always use this one of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'll start with this one here first. I think it'll be good enough. I just need to choose two points and figure out the rise and the run between them. 
So any two will work. Um, I think I'll use this one here. And then my other one, I guess I'll use, you know, something that falls on an integer. It doesn't really matter. I guess this one. Okay. So what's the rise and the run between these two points? Well, the, well, the rise is going to be negative because we're moving downward instead of upward. In fact, we go down one, two, three. So here the rise is actually negative. It's negative because we're going down, but it's negative three. Now the run is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So since we are moving to the right, it's positive, but it's positive six. So to determine the slope, the rise was negative three, the run was six. It's definitely a negative number. A three goes into six twice, so you could say negative one half. Or you could just think of this as negative 0.5, both are actually equivalent. So depending on if you want to answer with a fraction or a decimal, this is your slope. This formula would work just fine too. So I might as well just try it out, see what it would look like. So again, this point over here was, that was negative two, five. And then this point over here that's uh, in green, that is four, two. It doesn't matter which one you choose to be x1, y1, x2, y2. So I think I'll kind of switch it here. I'll say, well, what if I call this point x1, y1? And therefore, this point will be x2, y2. Like, what happens if I reverse it? Will this make a difference? If I use the formula for slope, y2 minus y1 is 5 minus 2. So that's this y value minus this y value. And for my x values, x2 minus x1, it's going to be negative 2 minus 4. So that's negative 2 minus 4. I don't have to worry about a minus, a minus here, um, but if I simplify this, the slope is equal to, well, 5 minus 2 is 3, and in the denominator, you get negative 6. Um, so, you know, since we did it backwards, like, the negative is now in the denominator instead of the numerator, but overall, this still means that your fraction is negative. It's negative 1 over 2. As a decimal, that would still be equal to negative 0.5. You know, I chose these two points. Uh, you probably could have picked easier ones, like, hey, maybe this point and this point, right? You go down one over two. Um, that is absolutely fine, but I just wanted to try something a little bit different. Uh, the last thing, what is the y-intercept of this line? Um, that's right here. I'm going to label that. Here's the y-intercept. And the coordinates of this are 0, comma, 4. So we don't have an equation for this line, but it turns out if you know the slope and you know the y-intercept, that's actually enough to generate the equation of this line. And that is it for this example. In example two, I want to graph the equation of this line. y is equal to 3 fifths x plus 2. From that graph, maybe we can figure out what the slope is and what the y-intercept is equal to. So we'll include that in this problem as well. If we want to graph this line, we should set up a table of values. We'll choose some numbers for x, find their corresponding y values, and we really only need two, so I think that's what I'll do. Choose two x values, find the corresponding y values, plot them, and draw the line going between them. Um, looking at the equation, and I think x is equal to zero is a nice number to work with, just because it simplifies my equation nicely. So if you choose x is equal to zero, to solve for the y value, that's 3 fifths times 0 plus 2, or simply 2. So 0 works well when plugging it into this equation. Now, if you try putting in a number like 1, which is valid, totally okay to select 1, if you put this into the equation, you get 3 fifths times 1 plus 2, which is totally fine. Um, that's really 3 fifths plus 2, and... Well, if you want to add those two fractions together, 2 is the same thing as 10 fifths, and that's 13 fifths, and that is the corresponding y value. And the only problem with it is, if you're trying to graph something on a grid, having an integer would be better than a fraction. So what we should do is maybe not use this one. Instead, 
choose something for x that will simplify nicely within the equation. The number one just didn't do that for us. I think the next maybe best number to use would be is five. The reason is if you put a five in place of x, it'll cancel with the five in the denominator, leaving you with an integer for your y value. So I'm just being a little strategic here. I'm going to use five. If you put that into the equation, that's three fifths times five plus two. And as I mentioned, well, these cancel. That's three plus two. And that equals five. We actually get the point five comma five. So let's see. This point here, zero two, is right here. And this is five five, that's right here. And I'll sketch the line going between them and we get this. So here's my line, and I only needed two points to find it. What's the slope of this line? I didn't ask it in the beginning, but we can figure it out. It's the rise over the run. This equation goes up three, that's the rise, and it goes over five. You can't simplify that, but that it, that's it. It's uh, three-fifths. It is no surprise that the number in front of the x is uh, three-fifths, which is also the slope. It turns out that you can express every line of the form y is equal to mx plus b, where if you write your line like this, the number in front of the x is your slope, and the number at the very end turns out to be your y-intercept. So like this number here is 2. The y-value of the y-intercept is 2, and this is no coincidence. If you know the slope and the y-intercept, you can actually use this formula to get the equation of this line. In example three, we're going to graph the line x is equal to four. I don't know if our standard approach is going to work. That is, you set up a table of values, choose some x's, find the corresponding y's, and plot the points. The reason for this is, over here, there, there's no y's. The second strange thing is, you can't put anything you want into the x table. Like, you can't put three in here because the only x that you're allowed to put into this equation is four. If you put three in place of this x, three doesn't equal four. So like, you know, you can't put three, you can't put negative two. In fact, the only thing that you're allowed to put into the equation for x is four. But what would the corresponding y value be? It turns out if there are no y's anywhere within your equation, that means y could be anything. So here's what I mean. Let's say I chose for my y value two. Does the point four comma two make this equation a true statement? If it does, this thing is on the line. All right, well, what you do is you take your equation, which is x is equal to four. Anywhere you see an x, you replace it with a four. And any place that you see a y, you replace it with a two, which there are none, so you don't. And if you end up with a true statement, that means this point is on your line. And it turns out you do. If you put this point, 4, 2, into this equation, it's a true statement. That means 4, 2 is actually on this graph. So I'll plot it. 4, 2. Well, what about 4, 7? Does that make the equation true? And it turns out the answer is yes. If you look at 4, 7, same thing. Your equation is x is equal to 4. You put a 4 into all the x's. You put a 7 into the y's, which you can't do. There are none. And if you end with a true statement, that means this point is included in your line. That's a true statement. This point is on my line. So you also get the point 4, 7. You could put 4, any number. 100, negative 3, 47. Another way of saying this is you get a vertical line. The only x value that you're allowed to have is 4, but you get every single y value back. So I wanted to look at this example because if you have an equation that only has x is equal to a number with no y value, this is a vertical line. I think the last thing to consider here is, since this lesson is about slope, what is the slope of this thing? What does that equal? 
you can use any two points that you'd like to figure this out. Maybe I'll use these two. You know, what's the rise over the run between these two points? Here, let's see. If I go from this point to this point, the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's a positive 5. You go up 5. And the run is, well, you actually don't go left or right. You get, so it's 0. Like, you don't move at all in this direction or this direction. So I'll put that as 0. 5 over 0, if you type that into a calculator, it's going to tell you some type of, like, error message, which is good. You can't divide by 0. And what this means for this problem is the slope doesn't exist. In fact, we say it's undefined. So if you graph a vertical line and you ask what the slope is, it'll turn out it's always undefined because if you go between two points, you'll divide by zero, which you're not allowed to do.